Welcome back. In this video, we'll tell you how to find the actual sharpening angle for your knife, and we'll continue where we left off in the last video, where we gave you the approximate clamping location front and back. We will further refine this. This process is called finding the sweet spot, that front and back perfect position for any given blade. The process in this video will be explained in two separate steps for instructional purposes, but in reality, once you actually start doing this, it'll be done at the same time. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a permanent marker of some sort and actually color in the bevel on my blade. This is important for a couple of reasons. It allows us to see how those diamond stones are interacting with the blade and where metal is being removed from it. This means we can then adjust our angle and our forward and backward sweet spot positioning accordingly. Now you will find yourself going back and forth between angle and sweet spot a little bit throughout this process, but it is sort of one process. Now, before we begin, I wanna talk about the anatomy of a blade for a moment, so we're all on the same page. Now, the, the, the cutty part, the stuff that you use to slice and dice, pretty obvious, that's the edge. And the part of that that's closest to the handle is called the heel. And the stabby point, that's the tip. Now, the part that will actually be sharpening is the bevel. And the part where the bevel meets the body of the blade is called the shoulder. The opposite side of the knife from the edge is known as the spine. It's often dull. And then when looking at the side profile of the knife, the curve where it starts to curve down towards the tip, not true for all blade shapes, but in this case it is, is known as the belly. Now I'm going to place my stones onto the guide rods with the 600 grit side facing in. I have my blade securely clamped with the belly about at the back of the vise, like we learned in the last video. I am now going to take my stone and just eyeball where it looks like it is touching the bevel pretty evenly. Once I have eyeballed this angle, I'm going to adjust my angle out by four degrees. In this case, I was eyeballed at 21, so I'm gonna set my actual angle to 25. This is really important because we wanna make sure not to scratch the body of your blade, especially with coated knives. So it's always better to start wider than you think it is and work your way in. Next, I'm gonna take my permanent marker, any kind of permanent marker will do, and placing it tip down onto the edge of the blade, I'm gonna start at the heel and run it all the way down until it slides off the tip. I wanna make sure that my whole bevel is being colored in. If there's a tiny bit of overflow onto the shoulder, that's not a big deal. Now that our bevel's colored in, we'll take our 600 grit stone and run it gently down the blade for a couple of passes. Now we're going to look and see where the Sharpie's actually being removed, focusing on the portion of the blade that's right above the vise. The blade may be a little bit inconsistent if it has not been sharpened on a Wicked Edge system before, as almost every single factory grind is going to have some inconsistency in it. So I'm going to look just over the top of this vise and see how the Sharpie is being removed. In this case, it is being removed only at the edge, which means I need to bring my angle in a little bit, which makes sense given that we raised our angle from what I eyeballed it at. So I'm going to slowly drop my angle one degree at a time. In my case, I just went two degrees because I have a pretty good idea of what that's gonna look like. And scrub again, just a little bit. If you need to, you should recolor this bevel in with Sharpie so that you can get, again, a really good picture of what's going on there. If the Sharpie is only being removed by the shoulder and not at the edge of the blade, that means that your angle is too low and should be raised up in one degree increments and each increment should be recolored in with a Sharpie, scrubbed a little bit, and checked to see what is changing. Once I'm satisfied with how the Sharpie is being removed directly above the vise there, then it is being removed across the entire bevel from edge to shoulder, I will then repeat this on the opposite side of the blade to make sure it is also being evenly removed. Once you're satisfied with the Sharpie being fully removed from the bevel over the vise, we can transfer our attention up to the point. This is gonna be how we find the sweet spot. So I'm going to again, scrub my stone over the blade and check where the Sharpie is being removed. 
one of two things will happen here. It'll either be removed at the tip and the edge and leave a little bit on the shoulder, or it will be removed on the shoulder and leave a little bit at the tip and the edge. An easy way to remember which direction to move the blade, depending on where the Sharpie is being removed, is you move the blade in the same direction the Sharpie is being removed in. So, if I have the Sharpie being removed at the shoulder, at the back, it means I need to move my blade back towards me, just a little bit, like so. If the Sharpie is being removed at just the tip and the edge, and leaving a little bit at the shoulder, it means that my blade needs to be moved forward just a little bit. Now, you are going to repeat this process, coloring in your bevel every time you move the blade, and recheck until you get all of the Sharpie removed cleanly off of the entire bevel. This will ensure that you get a nice, consistent, even bevel down the entire length of your blade. Once you're satisfied that the Sharpie is being removed cleanly from the entire bevel and the stone is tracking nicely down the length of the blade, this is where the repeatability tools come in. So, in order to make sure that you can get the exact same results every single time, you're going to want to use your alignment guide and your depth key. I'm going to plug this alignment guide through the depth key and then plug this depth key into the holes in my vice jaws. Now, I'm going to look at where the tip of my knife falls on this alignment guide. This will allow me to place my knife in the exact same spot forward and backwards every single time. Personally, I like to just take a picture of my tools in this slot and the knife clamped, or you can keep a spreadsheet. We have some available for download on our website, or there is a user submitted knife settings database also available on our website just whichever works best for you. Once I have that sweet spot setting recorded and depth setting recorded, I will also record what angle I sharpen this blade at so that the next time I go to sharpen this, I can touch it up in 30 seconds. This method of finding the angle and sweet spot should work for just about every blade out there, but can't guarantee for every single one. So if you're having trouble with a blade, please reach out to us at support at wickededgeusa.com and we'll be happy to help you figure out your settings. In the next video, we'll talk about how to actually sharpen your blade and how to break in those brand new diamond stones.